In the following tutorial, we are going to cover how to apply textures to the environment. What we'll be actually applying to our environment is materials. Uh, textures is what makes up a material inside UDK. So uh, to give you a better example, let's go up to the content browser. And here on the object type, we can choose textures and we can choose materials. The difference between the two textures is what makes up a material inside UDK. So we cannot apply textures onto the surface inside our environment because they consist of a single texture inside UDK. So let's uh, scroll down. So we can choose something like this. We have uh, this is a single texture. Uh, this is a diffuse. Uh, we have a normal map. We have a specular map. So if we double click, we can take a look at uh, all the textures inside UDK consist of a single file and combining multiple of these make up a material. So if we click on materials, and let's click off textures, and let's scroll down into a material that we can actually take a look at and use. So one of these uh, floor materials. This material is what we can apply to our brushes and to our static meshes. This material is made up of multiple textures and multiple material properties inside UDK. And combination of these makes up a material. So if we double click, this opens up material editor for that material for uh, the floor. So if we zoom out, uh, we have a network of nodes uh, used to connect between various material expressions and textures. So if we zoom in, we have uh, multiple textures. So here we have a texture, uh, a specular map that's being used and added together with ma uh, various material expressions and in the end a combination of all of these uh, multiple diffuse specular maps material expressions including normal maps combined all together form this material that we can actually use we'll be applying materials to our BSP geometry and we can tell the difference by if we click on textures you can see a red outline around the textures this means that we cannot use them we cannot simply drag them into our editor on the BSP brush, uh, this will not work. So what we need to do is by going under object type and clicking on materials, we get a set of materials that we can use inside the editor. So to cycle through and look through materials, again, we can click on all assets, make sure that under object type, we click on materials and we can search for a specific material that we want to look for. So let's type in wall. And here we have a set of materials that we can use and apply onto our BSP geometry. So let's uh, click something like this. This looks like a good material we can use for uh, the wall. And the way we apply materials onto BSP geometry is we simply left click, hold, drag right onto the surface. And we can close this and we can take a look at we applied a material on our BSP brush. Another way of doing so is if we go back to the content browser select the material that you want to use, select the face, and then simply right click and apply material. And here's another way we can apply materials. Let's go back to the lit mode so we can actually see all the faces. Once you've applied a material onto a brush face, a quick and easy way to uh, keep applying the same material on other brushes is if you hold down Alt, right click to grab the texture, and then Alt, left click to apply that texture. And we can do that with uh, many other textures that we selected in the scene. Uh, so let's apply another texture. Let's apply this uh, concrete wall. So let's say we want to replace it. So let's say let's just drag this right on here, replacing it. And what we need to do is again, we can grab the texture by Alt right click and then Alt left click to apply it to another face. And we can go all around applying it to all the brushes. Another way is we can select a specific texture referenced in the entire scene. So now we have three different faces that we have this cement texture applied. If you right click on the texture or the material, and I'm using texture and material because I'm used to uh, saying textures a lot. If you right click on the material face of the brush, go to select surfaces, and let me uh, reposition. Again, right click on the material of the brush, go to select surfaces, and here we have multiple ways we can select the materials, we can select adjacent faces, we can select 
matching textures, we can select matching resolution. There's many options that we can choose uh, that gives us a way to select the same material across the entire scene. So there's quite a few options. So let's select uh, matching texture. So what we do is we selected the texture of the brush that contains the, the cement wall texture that we applied. If we go on top, we can see that we didn't select anything else. And this is a way that we can begin to either replace that texture or we can change surface properties of how this texture appears to us. Now let's cover how we can adjust certain surface properties of each material in the scene. If you double click on the brush face where the material is applied, we have surface properties menu pop up. We can also select it by left clicking and then press F5 to say menu will pop up. So you have a couple of options how you want to access that. Either double click or press F5 after selecting it. You can also have it open and we can just switch between uh, different materials inside the scene and we'll just update and change our surface properties window to that uh, material. So let's go back to this front wall and let's double click. Let's go back to the surface properties and here we have quite a few options how we want to have our material look. We can pan our material and we can align it. We can uh, pan left, pan right and pan up and down and if you want to reverse the order of how it pans if you press shift key and click it will reverse the direction of where the material is going to be panning left or right or up and down same for the up and down pressing the shift key will reverse the order you can also rotate and if we want to rotate back just press the shift key now the scaling option is a very important one by choosing any of these values we can increase the scale of the material so let's say four we can apply you can see that uh, we increased the scale of this material and then we can uh, maybe something a little less, let's say something like two. We can also input our own value. We can put three and then just pan it up and down to make sure that the material is aligned. Another way to align your materials on the BSP brushes is to use the alignment tool. We can use planar box of fit. So let's use planar, click apply, and this will apply planar alignment to our surface. Uh, be careful of using this because sometimes it does stretch the texture out. So if we click on fit, we can take a look at that. It really completely stretched it out. So you want to be very careful of how the material appears inside your scene. Uh, so let's get it back to our planer. Let's apply and uh, apply maybe a scale of three and uh, maybe four. You also want to be careful when you scale on the material too high. Uh, the resolution of it becomes very apparent when the player gets too close to it. So if we zoom in and take a look at it from right here, uh, scale of 4 looks okay, but if we bring it back to its default value, we can see that the resolution and how the material looks on the BSP brush is a little bit better when it's at default value. So you can scale it up a little bit, but be careful of scaling too much. So let's put it to 2. And then we have quite a few lighting options of how the lighting is going to be calculated across this material as well as light mass setting. And at the beginning stages you can ignore some of these. They do have quite a few uh, important features that you can uh, play around with but in the beginning you can leave it at default as you're uh, learning UDK. Now that we got a few basics out of the way let's apply our materials to the entire environment and uh, scale them and just uh, kind of get it looking a little bit better and get rid of some of this default material that we have in our scene. So let's go back up on top and let's just uh, use the shortcut key. Alt right click, Alt left click to apply some of these materials on the rest of the brushes. Let's go back into the content browser and let's take a look at what else we can use. Uh, let's type in floor. Let's take a look at what we can use for the floor. There's quite a few tile materials that we can use like this one. Let's uh, go in here, let's apply and see what this looks. It's a little bit better. See what this looks like, maybe something like this now. So I'm just kind of seeing, uh, applying some of these materials onto the floor and seeing how it reacts to the scene and based on the static meshes we have set. So some of these will work, others will not. So right now I'm just getting uh, a, a more of a visual gauge on the environment with certain materials. So this is a little bit better. Let's go under packages. Let's clear this and let's go under packages. Let's type in wall here and see what else we can find. 
uh, we have a walls package in here and we already kind of looked through some of these let's go back up to uh, right here HU walls let's take a look at this material so what it looks like uh, it's not bad let's see if, how this looks on our walls and let's scale this up select the material press F5 let's increase the scale of it a little bit let's bring it down so that looks pretty good let's uh, alt right click grab it and apply it to the rest of the walls and then we need to select all of these all together and then hold down control to add to a selection go on to press F5 and apply our scaling for the rest of the brushes and we need to bring this down just like we did on the other brush and make sure they line up let's close this let's take a look at what it looks like let's change out some of these default textures on the ceiling and the top uh, we can reapply some of these on the very top so let's say if we want to grab this see what it looks like on the interior let's go all around and take a look at it so that looks a little bit better uh, let's see maybe we can find something else let's go uh, let's leave this packages and let's go back up to all assets make sure we have material set and let's type in actually I'm gonna leave it I'm just gonna browse through some uh, uh, the entire package see what I can find maybe uh, we'll see some kind of a happy accident of a, a material that we weren't able to catch by just simply searching here's an interesting corroded metal uh, let's take a look at what this looks like maybe even the ceiling let's see what it looks like for the ceiling and now it looks very nice so I'm gonna apply this material and change all of these out and see what this looks like on the ceiling and yeah it's coming together now let's take this material and apply it for the interior of the windows so alt right click alt left click to apply and if we press W to get rid of all the static meshes, now we have kind of cleared out our scene. So now we can actually work with the BSP brushes and apply the materials on them. So I'm going to go all the way around and apply all the materials for the interior of the windows. So we can do the same for the top and apply all the materials on each face, but uh, there's an easier way to do so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on all of these faces single face for each window and I'm going to go across here and do the same here and just selecting a single face for the interior and once I have all of them selected I'm going to right click select surfaces and let me pan out select surfaces and we can select matching brush this will select all the interior parts of the same brush for the textures. Next, I'm just going to go back to the content browser, make sure that the corroded material is selected. Now right click, apply material. And now we have the default texture gone and we didn't have to apply it individually to every single interior of the window brush. So now we still have all of them selected. I'm going to press F5 and I'm going to rotate. And I'm going to scale 1. So now we have all the materials on the interior window aligned properly and look a lot better. So let's do the same thing for here. I'm going to select all of the interior, one face at a time, and we know that it's one single brush. I'm going to right click, select surfaces, matching brush. Also we can press Shift B to do the same, and then press F5 and rotate it also go back up on top here and maybe increase the scale of, of these so let's press F5 let's go to set it to about 2 let's see what that looks like it's a little bit better let's uh, pan it down and now it's nicely aligned let's press W and we can kind of get a gauge of how this looks with the static meshes let's go back to the content browser uh, let's go search search for metal and there's not that many metal materials but there is one uh, so let's see what this looks like maybe break up the monotony of the texture of the ceiling this looks okay so let's uh, scale this up let's press F5 let's apply 2 
and let's uh, move it to the other side kind of get it a little bit aligned maybe let's set it to 1.5 and zoom out so we can see and make sure that it's kind of aligned on all of the faces something like this and let's bring back our static meshes and it's a little bit better so the overall process now continues to be the same uh, we can continue now adding uh, some of the materials for the exterior walls of the building uh, we can swap some of these textures out if we don't like them and uh, we can continue maybe adding some static meshes in here as well to uh, detail a little bit more and here I just added the same material that we had inside for the outside floor and I just tweaked a few materials on top and here and before we finish off it's important to quickly build light and jump inside and to take a look at how the materials look in game let's quickly build our lighting make sure it's on preview click OK now we're gonna ignore these errors let's go back to the lit mode and play from here and we can tell now that light mass is working with our materials so now it's not reflecting that white blue default texture that we had before now it's working with the color of each material and it's reflecting that back into the environment and by running around we can take a look at the scale and uh, how everything is aligned and if any material is stretched out too far or it's distorting our scale so overall it looks very good and uh, the environment is going to really come together when we begin to add lighting uh, some fog and post-processing 